guys. Thank you, worship team. Thank you for leading us into God's presence. Amen. Another great day in the presence of God. Amen. Well, I just want to say hello to everyone. I want to welcome all you guys. Thank you for joining with us in church today in the presence of God. We hope that you've been blessed so far in the worship service. Hope that you've, just like us, you've received from the presence of God. You've felt God speaking to you and moving in you. And we just anticipate that God's going to continue to do things here in the remainder of our service. And we just ask that you just continue to open up your heart to what the Holy Spirit wants to do and say to you today in the service. Well, we've been on a series talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we've been talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for us today. It's not something that we've, uh, we just read about. It's not just something we've, we look at in the book of Acts and say, yeah, it's, it was great for them. You know, the Holy Spirit moved awesomely, did great things, miraculous things. Yeah, it's fantastic stories. That was good for them, but it stopped. No, it didn't stop. The work of the Holy Spirit is continuing on in our day and in our time in modern day. And what we're looking at is how the Holy Spirit works in our lives and how the gifts of the Holy Spirit can, can work in our lives and how we can use them and how we can expect the Holy Spirit to work through us. Let me read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 here, looking at verses 8 to 11. And these are the, the verses that we're looking at that talk about the different gifts of the Holy Spirit. So it's 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 to 11. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So we see that there's one Spirit, but there are many different gifts that that Spirit gives. The, the Spirit of God gives to people, and what our job is as Christians is to be like that delivery person. So we receive something from the Holy Spirit, but it's not for us to keep. It's not for us to hang on to and guard and, oh yeah, this is for me. This is fantastic. No, God gives it to us so that we can in turn give it to others. And so that's the way we need to think about ourselves as Christians, is that God wants to use you. God wants you to be that person that he works in and works through to see people's lives changed, to see a difference made in them, to see people drawn closer to God through the things that you do through a step of obedience. These gifts, every single one of these gifts, are outward focused. These gifts are outward focused. They are focused on other people. And when we receive a gift of the Holy Spirit, maybe it's a, a word of wisdom, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago. A word of wisdom is not for you. It's from God for somebody else. And sometimes, yeah, we can hear something from the Spirit of God that encourages us and lifts us up. But when the gifts of the Holy Spirit come to you, it's something for you to go and be a blessing to other people. If you're only focused on yourself when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that's the wrong way to do it. That's the wrong way to think about it. That's not what God intended. We see in 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 13 and 14, we see the gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in those chapters, especially in chapter 12 and 14. But right in the middle is the chapter about love. And the chapter of love tells us 
that we need to think outside. We need to be focused on others. We need to look out and be a blessing to others. And so when we receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, yeah, it's, okay, how can I be a blessing to that person? Have that heart of love towards that person to see them drawn to yourself, to, not, not to yourself, but to the Lord, to Jesus himself. Sometimes, sometimes when we feel the Holy Spirit telling us to do something, just talking practically. Sometimes when we feel the Holy Spirit telling us to do something or telling us to say something to somebody or maybe praying for somebody for healing or maybe God gives you a word for this person and he's encouraging you to do that. He's encouraging you to tell that person. You just have a sense in your spirit that, okay, I need to talk to them about this. And sometimes we get a little bit afraid. I have to admit, sometimes I get a little bit afraid too. I think about, okay, so what's this person going to think? Are they going to think that I'm weird when I, when, I, when I say what I think the Holy Spirit is trying to say? Are they going to wonder who is this weird guy who's just kind of talking to them without really having any knowledge about who they are or what they're doing? Or Honestly, sometimes that's how I feel. But... These chapters tell us that our focus needs to be on love. And if we love somebody, if we see them with a heart of compassion, like Jesus saw the multitudes, it says he, he looked at them in compassion, as a sheep without a shepherd. If we look with the eyes of Jesus, all of our fears and our doubts and our uncomfort our discomfort, it's going to just all go away because they are more important than what we feel or what we think. And that's the heart that God wants us to have. God wants us to have a heart of love. When we feel something for somebody or when we think that God's saying something about somebody, okay, be bold. Not because you're something great, or you're something wonderful, but because that person needs that gift. That person needs what God is saying. And maybe, just maybe, there's nobody else that God is speaking to you, speaking to about that person besides you. So be bold. Be bold in love. Think about how you have been affected by God's love for you through other people. And that's the same thing that God wants to do in people around you too. We are blessed to be a blessing. We have a relationship with God. We have a relationship with the living Spirit of God for a reason. It's to be a blessing to the people around us. You know, we think sometimes in, in our culture, a lot, a lot of times we end up thinking a lot about ourselves. You know, what can I get or what can I achieve or how can I you know take that next step in my career or how can I advance myself or you know when you stop and think about people who have had an influence on you it's not the people who are selfish who had an influence on you it's the people who looked outside of themselves and said I'm gonna give I'm going to give of my time. I'm going to give of my talents. I'm going to give of the spirit of God that's in me. I'm going to use what I have to be a blessing to, the, to other people. The people who have had the biggest impact on you are the people who have given to you. Not given of, you know, maybe it was. Maybe it was finances or maybe it was something. But we always make a difference in our lives. We always make a difference, not by being selfish, not by thinking about what can we get, but we make a difference by thinking what can we give. And when we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we need to have that same heart as well. How can I be a blessing? How can I give? How can I look with a heart of compassion just like Jesus did and be a blessing to people around him? And that's the, 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 the heart. That's the motivation 
that God wants us to have when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're not to use them for ourselves, but we're to use them to bring glory to God and to bring people closer to relationship with Jesus. So today what we're talking about is the next gift of the Holy Spirit. It's listed in 1 Corinthians 12 there. We read about it. It's called the gift of healing. The gift of healing. So when we think about the gifts that we've already talked about, a word of wisdom. A word of wisdom is a gift. It can help the person to know the direction that they should go or the decision that they should make in a specific situation. A word of knowledge is also a gift. A word of knowledge can help a person to know that they are known by God and that they are loved by God. The gift of faith is also a gift. It can help a person continue in hope when they face a difficult circumstance, and it will help them endure through that circumstance. It's the gift of faith. The gift of healing is also a gift as well. When someone has a physical problem, maybe it's a disease, maybe it's a broken leg, maybe it's something going on inside of them, a gift of healing shows that person that God is sovereign, that he does miracles today, he's involved in people's lives, and he cares enough about that person to bring a transformation in their physical bodies. That's what the gift of healing does. It's a demonstration of God's creative power in our physical bodies. It shows his compassion on the suffering and his power to save and heal in body, soul, and spirit. That's the gift of healing. If we look in the Bible, there's many different stories about healing. Specifically in Jesus' ministry, there are many different stories about when Jesus healed people. Uh, one, for example, would be in Matthew chapter 9. Let me just read this real quick for you. Uh, verses 1 to 7. So it says, Jesus got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then, behold, they brought to Jesus a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. So there was a, a paralytic, a man, he couldn't walk. And Jesus saw him, looked on him with compassion, forgave his sins, healed his body, and he was healed. It was a, a gift of faith, or sorry, it was a gift of healing, a, a healing that was a gift for that paralytic man. He was healed, he went home, walked home, and had wholeness in his body. In Acts chapter 3, there's another story. So this is after Jesus died, rose again, ascended into heaven, poured out his Holy Spirit, upon all of the uh, disciples. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were heading to the temple to pray. And they were entering through the, through the gate called Beautiful, and there was a beggar on the side of the road. The beggar looked at him and said, Hey, how, you know, I want, you know, do you have any uh, silver or gold or any money or anything? Peter said, Silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I'm going to give you. And he said to him, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And at that moment, he was healed. He stood up, he rose, and he walked. And all the people around him who went into the temple day after day and saw that beggar man, that, that, that paralyzed man sitting there, they thought, wow, look it. And the, 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 the glory of God was known in that city and around that temple because of what God did in that man. So we see the gifts of healing happening, a gift of healing in Jesus' ministries, several of them, many of them, all throughout the Gospels. And we also see here in Acts, this is just one example. There was other people who were, who were healed as well. And today, 
Today, God is still doing miracles. The Holy Spirit is still, still doing the miracles of healing. I remember myself. I went to um, one of our village churches a, a number of years ago and was visiting with the pastor, and he asked me to pray for a, for a man who had been out in the bush, and a snake had come and bit him in the ankle. And this was a number of days ago, and um, by the time I saw that his ankle was all kind of purplish green, it was all getting swollen, you could see that it was starting to kind of rot away uh, where the, the, the venom and stuff had gone into his ankle. And the pastor asked, us to, asked me to pray. And so, all right, let's pray, let's do this. And so we prayed for the man, and we didn't see anything instantly healed or anything happen in his physical bodies, but like two days later, the pastor called me up and said, hey, this guy's all better. God healed him, and he's 100% better. He's walking around, and everything's, get, everything's all better now. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. God is still doing miracles today. And talk to some of our different uh, church planters and pastors out in the villages all through the country and in different places all around the world. God is still doing the miracles of healing today. The Holy Spirit is still moving today. Let's look at a number of different verses here. I put together five or six verses that I hope will strengthen your faith for what God wants to do through you when it comes to healing. All right? I'm just going to read through these real quick, but let's put all of these verses together and see what God wants to do through us. Okay? Matthew 12, verse 15. Okay? It says, But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, but great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Okay, they came to Jesus for healing. And what happened? Jesus healed them all. Okay? In Luke 4, verses 17 to 19, this is Jesus', Jesus words about himself when he went into the synagogue and he was reading from the book of Isaiah. It says, And Jesus was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So, 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 so observe that. The Spirit of the Lord. God's Spirit is upon me. So he's, he's reading from Isaiah, but it's, he's talking about himself being the fulfillment of these words, and his ministry is the fulfillment of these words here in Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That day, Jesus was fulfilling the words of the prophet Isaiah. This was written about him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do this, to preach the gospel, to, to recovery of sight to the blind, the oppressed, set free, liberty, deliverance, all of that because of the Spirit of the Lord upon Jesus. Let's continue. Romans 8, verse 11. It says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So the same spirit that was on Jesus is also upon us who believe. That same spirit for anointing, for healing the brokenhearted, proclaiming liberty to the captives, that same spirit that was upon Jesus is upon us as believers. Recovery of sight to the blind. That's the spirit that is on us. It's not about who we are. It's about the spirit that is on us and in us. The same spirit that was in Jesus, same spirit is in us. The words of Jesus in John 14, 12, he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works 
that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. So these are the words of Jesus. He said, for those who believe, you will do even greater works. The same works and greater works. So as a result, we need to have faith for those things. We see it in the words of Jesus. We see it in Paul, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in us. Jesus said, I will send the spirit. You'll do greater works. This is not my words. These are the words of the Bible. These are the words of Jesus. So we can expect to see healings. We can expect to see miracles. The gift of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. We need to expect it because it's the words of Jesus. One more verse. This is the Great Commission from Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. This is our calling in Christ Jesus. This is what he has called us as disciples to do. Lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. This is our calling as Christians in Jesus. What does God expect to be the result of healing? Or what can we see as a result of a miracle? Well, in Luke chapter 17, in Luke chapter 17 is a story of 10 lepers who were healed. And as they left, as they journeyed away from Jesus to go present themselves at the temple, they were healed. And only one of them came back. And thanked Jesus. So, one of the results that God wants to see, and we see in the Bible, is that God wants the glory to go to Him. It's not about people. It's not about oh, He look how look how amazing He was and laid His hands or did this. No, all glory goes to God. These guys, this one guy, he came back and he worshipped Jesus and he thanked Jesus. It wasn't just about himself. It wasn't just about the healing. It's about him bringing glory to God. In Mark chapter 5, there was a demon-possessed man who was delivered and healed. What did he do? He went back and he reported what Jesus did and talked about Jesus Jesus' mercy, and many were amazed. This is an interesting story because this man wanted to follow Jesus, but Jesus said, no, you go back and you tell people about what God did for you, tell them about his mercy. And it said before he was, he was delivered, before he was healed, this man would be up in the mountains, he would be out in the tombs screaming at night. They tried to bind him up with chains and shackles. He would just break them off. So everybody all around knew about this guy. They would hear him. Think about it. Imagine in the middle of the night. Ah, he's screaming out in the mountains. And then they knew who this guy was. And Jesus said to him, no, you go and show yourself. Tell him out. Tell about all the mercy. You know, one of the things about healing is God wants the glory. Not for his own sake, but to bring people into relationship with him. When they see, when people see the difference that God makes in somebody's lives, they can't help but bring glory to God. They can't help but say, wow, this is a miracle. This is amazing. This is supernatural. And God gets the glory, and many people come to faith in Jesus. This is one of the reasons that God does these, these kind of miracles. In Acts chapter 3, we just read about it, or we just talked about it, when the, the lame man received his healing at the, at the gate of the temple. It says, many were filled with awe and astonishment. Some of those people became believers, and they got added to the church. 
the early church. In John chapter 11, John chapter 11 is the story when Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. An amazing, amazing story. And it says at the end of that story that many people, many Jews from Jerusalem who had come to the funeral, they believed in Jesus. He said, yeah, he's the Messiah. Jesus wants the glory, but not just for his own sake, but for the sake of people who don't know him yet. For people who don't have a relationship, don't have that joy and peace. God draws him, people to himself through the miracles that he does. And we can participate in that. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Pray for people. Believe in faith that that same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is in you and wants to bring a transformation in other people. So how can we operate in this gift of healing? Number one, have faith. Have faith for healing. Healings didn't stop when the Bible was finished being written. Healings didn't stop. Healings are for today. It is for us. Healings are for us, and they are for today. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Healings will continue forever. Well, when we go to heaven, we don't need healings anymore, but while we're here on this earth, while there's sickness, while there's pain, there will be healings. So believe for it. Holy Spirit is working. Number two, have compassion on the suffering. Love like Jesus loved. When you see someone who's suffering, who's in pain, think about them the way Jesus thinks. They're not somebody to be avoided. Pain is real. Sickness is real. It's part of life. Let's not try to avoid it. Let's think, how would Jesus think about this person? How does Jesus see this person? Think and live and act the way that Jesus would as well. Know that Jesus' heart is for those who call out to him. Pray for those who need healing. You know, I don't know of too many people who would say no if you asked them if they needed help or if they needed prayer or healing. You know, we don't just go and just find random people down the street, but what we normally do is a good, good way to do, build relationships with people. Get to know someone. If someone is, you know, you see someone who you think is suffering, just talk to them. We don't have to be weird about it. We don't have to be, you know, all up in the sky and, you know, oh, I'm a holy, no, a holy person. No, you don't have to think like that. Just talk to people. Say, hey, how's it going? Maybe you help them in their natural needs, but it opens the door for the supernatural as well. Sometimes when we see beggars or people who are on the side of the road who need help, okay, yeah, maybe we can give help them naturally, but believe that that will open a door to the supernatural and to them opening up their hearts to Jesus. And maybe in the middle of a conversation we hear about the things that are hurting their hearts or hurting their lives, and you say, I believe in Jesus, and I believe that Jesus heals and he does miracles. Can I pray for you? And there aren't very many people who are going to say no to that, especially if they know the depth of their need, especially if they have gone to a lot of trouble to try to fix that need within them. So be bold. Be bold in love. Don't worry about the results. Let God heal. It's our job to pray. It's our job to be obedient. Finally, once again, operate out of love and compassion like Jesus did. These gifts, this gift of healing is for us and it's for today. Believe it. All these verses that we read in the Bible, the Spirit of, the Spirit of God was on Jesus. The same Spirit is on us as well. Lay hands on the sick. Expect that they will recover. This is our calling in the Great Commission. This is Jesus' calling to us. So believe it in faith and begin to operate it in faith. God has put people all around you. Maybe it's your family members. 
If you have family members that are suffering, they're in pain, they're sick, be bold and pray for them. Pray that the peace of God would come upon them. Pray that healing would come upon them and bring strength to their physical bodies and bring healing to melt away cancer, to set reset broken bones, to bring light to the eyes. This is who our Jesus is. This is what our Jesus still does today. Let me pray for all of us. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your power in our lives. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we believe in you. You are the God of miracles. And it's not just in the Bible, it's today. You are the God of miracles today. And God, we put our hope in you. We put our trust in you. And we believe, God, that you, through the Holy Spirit, are going to take us to that next level of seeing people healed. The Spirit of the Lord, of the Sovereign Lord, is upon us because you have anointed us to preach the gospel, to bring recovery of sight to the blind, to lay hands on the sick and they will recover, to bind up the brokenhearted. That is who we are in the Spirit of God. And God, I just pray for an equipping. Lord God, I pray for a, a, a new boldness and a new strength upon everyone who's watching and listening. God, I speak life. God, I speak life to take away all of the fear and all of the doubt. Speak life to the truth of the word of God in people's hearts and in, in their lives. God, we believe. We believe. God, and we expect that the same things that you did in the Bible we will do as well, and greater works than these. This is your promise. This is your word, and we stand on it in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Don't forget to join together in your small groups and worship God together, meet together, encourage each other in our journey with Jesus. God bless you all. Have a great week. Amen. Amen.